You know, most people that battle generational causes are battling with what they were told. It's not generational causes. It's the information they are fed with that they are battling with. If nobody told them of generational causes, they will never have had any issue with it. It will take somebody and it has to be a pastor. It has to be a pastor. Because pastors are trusted. So because people trust pastors, they will take whatever the pastor says as if God spoke. It will take a pastor to take a man that is born of God, born of the spirit. God is domiciled in him. And all power is in him. It will take a pastor to deceive him. To believe that he has generational causes, family patterns, ancestral covenants. It will take a pastor to tell Israel, you don't have to go back to Egypt. I will bring Egypt to you. It will take a pastor to bring the idols of Egypt and give to the children of Israel in the wilderness. You got born again, you are excited. You sang songs like, born, born, born again. I am born, born again. Born, born, born again. I am born, born again. I am born of the spirit. Washed in the blood. I am born, born again. I am born of the spirit. Washed in the blood. I am born, born born again after singing that with the joy of salvation it will take a pastor to take you from that and bring you backward behind the cross and make you start struggling to get to the cross it will take a pastor a pastor now tells you you have to try there are pastors who tried and didn't make it he starts taking you away from after the cross where you are in the glory of his resurrection and brings you behind the cross and begins to tell you to colorful and bright, I must get there. I must get there. Where? It will take a pastor. So you see believers that are supposed to be taught the authority of the believer. Believers that are supposed to be taught that you are seated with Christ far above all principalities and powers. A pastor is teaching them that even Jesus had generational causes and he couldn't break it. That's why he died young. So if they have cast Jesus, who else cannot be cast? They have finished Jesus for you. Who else? So now the believer starts struggling with what does not exist. Only exists inside his mind by a piece of wrong information. So that's why casting down imagination. Bringing every thought under subjection to the obedience of what Christ has done. Am I teaching good? It will take a pastor. It will take a pastor to create that demon that does not exist in the mind of this innocent brother or sister. It's what you are told. So the minute you were told, you became conscious of an, a non-existing devil. It's just like idols. You know, idols don't exist. But if you're an African, they will exist. So in your mind, generational curses exist because you were told. If you are not told, you will not even recognize their existence. Some people, everything that happens to them is spiritual. You wake up in the morning, you hit your leg by the bed. Then you finally manage to get water to bath, you fell in the bathroom. Then you manage to finally dress and get to the car. On your way to the car, the door, the door tore your trouser. 
Then you went back, changed your trousers, and entered the car to start the car. The car did not start. Uh -uh. The devil is after me. No, brother. It's not the devil that is after you. There are days things just go wrong like that. It's common to man. Stop spiritualizing things. You see, I can tell they are calling me from the village. They are calling me from... which? Who is calling you from the village? Nothing is spiritual. You just have a normal challenging day. That's it. See, how can three things happen in a minute? I hit my leg. I fell in the bathroom. The door tore my trouser. And now the car is... No, no, no. They are calling me from the village. Oh, yeah, go and answer. <laughs> Nobody is calling you from the village. Where you are seated, village people cannot access. You are seated together with Christ. In the heavenlies, your life is dead. You are hid with Christ in God. And whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even I feel like preaching. Somebody shall preach, preacher. I am no secular, nagada. Shout, I am born of God. I have overcome the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world i have received power i trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt me i am the one in authority right here shout glory somebody sit down if you can cool adabash Cool Adabash. Cool Adabash. I am a perfect product from a perfect father. I thought you would say that. I'm a perfect product from a perfect father. Don't you never say nothing is wrong with you? Say it three times. Say it two more times. Shout it. Let him hear it well. Somebody says, I know my problem. My problem is I am battling with weakness. This is my weakness. No, you don't have a weakness. You are not made of a poor specimen. You are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. You are born of the divine sperm of God. There is no weakness in your genes. You came from God. There is no weakness in God. There can be no weakness in you. As he is, so are we in this world. I thought somebody would shout, that's, who you are. that's me you are talking about. Tell me again, there's no weakness in me. Say it to me three more times. Two more times. One more time. Say, I am from a perfect manufacturer. I'm a perfect product. Nothing is wrong with me. I didn't hear a powerful amen. 